For those of you who don't know, this is Roxy, my husky. She's the OG rock star that helped me launch my social media career. He has more than 2 million followers on Instagram. Talk about a fan club. Today, I wanna to share a very important story of something that happened with Roxy. It's a terrible situation, as you can tell. She's now a tripod, a three-legged dog, and she's doing well, but this situation could have been avoided, and I wanna arm you with information that you should know when you have to make a choice when your pet gets sick. Roxy, come. Sit. Good dog. Good dog. You good dog. So to set up the story, um, Roxy now lives with my dad, so he takes care of her vet stuff, takes her in for checkups, and Roxy had sort of a bump growing on her um, right arm. And this bump was there for several years. It may have grown slightly over the course of those years, but this bump never bothered her, so I wasn't too concerned about it. But my dad said, you know what, I'm gonna point it out to the vet uh, on the upcoming visit, which I thought was a very good idea. So when they went to uh, go get this bump checked out and an overall physical, they said, you know, for 12 years old, this dog is doing very well, in good health, running all the time, she's so fit, she's so active, she looks like an eight-year-old dog. But they said, we wanna take a sample of the bump on her leg and send it for cytology, which means that under a microscope, they look at uh, and see what cells are there to decide is this a cancerous lump, non-cancerous lump, etc. So after my dad went, he gave my phone number for the vet to call back. And then when the vet ended up calling me back, they said that, you know, unfortunately, the cytology came back and it looks like this is a cancerous bump. They called it a sarcoma, which means that it's a soft tissue cancer. And they recommended bringing the dog back in for a consultation with the surgeon. I know how surgery is difficult on humans, and I can only imagine how difficult it is on dogs who need activity in order to stay fit, in order to stay mentally well, uh, especially dogs like Roxy. She's so active, she's a husky, she has so much energy in her. So I, I told my dad a list of questions that I wanted him to ask the surgeon. And those questions are questions that you should always ask before going in for, for a procedure. A, is this type of cancer that Roxy has dangerous in that is it likely to spread? Is it likely to cause problems elsewhere in her body? What's the five-year survival rate? What impact will this have on her life as a 12-year-old dog? Is it worth for a 12-year-old husky to go for a surgery on her leg to remove a tumor that so far has yet to cause a problem. And I thought my dad being a physician would be well armed to ask these questions and I trusted him to do so. I actually don't talk to him the following day when he actually went for the visit. And the next day he sends me a picture of Roxy wearing a cast, healing up in the sun in the backyard. And I thought, oh wow, she must be doing so much better because she's healing. And he goes, she's doing awesome post-op. The doctor told me that it wouldn't be that big of a procedure and that they could likely do this you know, in and out, one day's time, and he, they thought it was beneficial. I was a little bit skeptical, but you know, seeing the fact that she was recovering was very promising to me. So over the next few days, things started to change. Um, she had to go in for multiple wound checks to get her wound examined because the area where she had the tumor, she had a very thick bandage on, my dad couldn't check it himself. There were sutures in place, staples in place and they needed to constantly check this. So she was on antibiotics, they were doing these checks. I noticed that the bandage was on really tight, but you know, I'm looking at pictures and I'm trusting my dad and all this stuff. And then like a week goes by and my dad calls me while I'm working in the hospital and says, Mike, like, I need you to come home after the hospital and look at Roxy's leg, I don't think it's good. And I'm like, but wait, like, I'm not a surgeon, A, I'm not a vet, B. Um, if you think it's bad, then that means probably we should go get it checked out at the vet. And he was like, no, I have an appointment with them like in two days, I'm gonna go then. That's when the surgeon is there because he's on vacation. There's some complicated things. So, okay, of course, I'll come by. So when I came by, I'm looking at Roxy's foot. It was now unwrapped. And this is a graphic photo, but I'm gonna show it. Um, her foot was dead. Her paw was dead. Like there was no blood flow. It was a cold foot. It smelled gangrenous, which means it was becoming infected. I was like, dad, like, this is terrible. Like she's gonna lose her foot. Like there's no, like this foot has clearly not had circulation for a long period of time. And for me, I, what I wasn't sure of, was this an issue of the bandage being very tight 
Or was this more of an issue surgically that when they removed the tumor, they also took out extra tissue and possibly the blood vessels that go down to her foot? And my dad like never clarified this with the surgeon. Roxy, leave it. So I was very like upset about that and wondering the whole time, A, should have Roxy have gotten the surgery? B, did the surgeon make a mistake? C, was the bandage on too tight? And honestly, it's really hard to know so that when my dad actually went in there, they basically said, yeah, look, we think we should amputate. And my dad let me speak to the surgeon. And I asked the surgeon very frankly, like, look, is this a mess up? Did we take out too much, you know, um, tissue that the blood vessel came out along with it. Because if you take out the arteries and the blood vessels that are higher in the leg, they essentially feed circulation to the bottom of the paw. It would never heal the bottom of the paw then. Or was it that the bandage was on too tight in the rehab process? Or is she an older dog and this is a normal complication that happens time to time? And he basically said all of the above. And while I appreciate the honesty, because he said, look, we had to take out a lot of tissue. The tumor was larger than we expected. I think like if I was working with a human surgeon, I think that we would have thought about those risks that if we open up or are potentially getting ready to open up a person's um, body, and then we see that we can cause more damage than actually benefit by doing a biopsy or removing a tumor, we actually don't do it. So I asked the surgeon, like, what was the dog's staging of the cancer? And it was a stage one sarcoma. And not to say that this isn't serious, it's just that at 12 years old, Roxy's life expectancy is maybe another two years. She's getting in that range, it's sad to say, obviously. But, you know, we're really hurting her quality of life by putting her under the stress of that surgery, plus the risk of um, this thing's going wrong, like right now. So poor Roxy, in recovering from the surgery, was barely able to walk, was very sick during that time. And then now we're saying we have to amputate her entire leg. And not just the entire leg, the scapula as well, because apparently in dogs, this is the way to do it. I asked about a prosthetic, but he said that that would require a second operation as well. And she would have to learn to use it. And an older dog and being a husky, which is a breed that tends to be more picky with pain. He said that she might not even adapt well to it. He recommended just taking off the entire leg and uh, kind of told me some new information that I didn't know about dogs, that they tend to handle amputations better than humans because they don't have the psychological tra traumatic component of this where they don't miss having the fourth leg that, you know, she's like, okay, I have three legs, this is what I do, and that's who I am, and that's the dog I am, and I move forward. Can I get a high five? Or is that messed up task? Oh, good girl! Wow. Good girl, here, you get bonus. And because of that, they seem to rebound quite well, and I will say out of this whole process, that's probably been the most accurate part of it, that Roxy has recovered quite well, thank God. She had a mean scar, you can't really see it now, um, but it's healed up quite well. We took out the staples a few weeks ago, She's now going for longer walks with my dad. When I come home, she's wagging her tail. She's still shedding like a monster, as you can tell from all of my clothes. She's still super sweet. She's happy, obviously slightly lower energy because she fatigues. And now I know she has higher risks of getting arthritis in her legs because she's unbalanced. She has to put more stress on each one of the, the joints. Yeah, it's sad. It's sad watching you know your dog get sick with whatever condition it is. So all in all, this goes to say, you know, when you bring your dog to the vet, make sure you're armed with good information. Make sure you ask hard questions of both, not only the general vet, but the surgeon. Make sure they give you accurate risk assessments because it's very easy to say, oh, we'll just take this out, easy peasy, no problem. But then like your dog can lose a, a limb and it could be quite frustrating because it feels like you didn't get all the information. But know that pets are sadly not immortal and you wanna think about their quality of life just as importantly as you do the length of their life. So hopefully Roxy continues to be a little rock star that she is. She loves her treats. And uh, I'm really glad that, you know, this terrible situation kind of had not the worst ending.